Hello and welcome to this uh, quick look at one of the features of Worldographer. Yesterday I posted a video about tracing an underlay when you've got a hex-based map already that you're tracing over. So that makes things a little bit easier as far as setting up the map. Uh, you, you knew that I knew that the hex map that we were tracing was 100 hexes by 50. So when I was setting up the map, uh, the new map, I knew that I could do 100 by 50 and it was a little bit easier. In this case, I um, grabbed, oops, wrong window there. Um, in this case, I grabbed a um, image of the world, and it is set to, um, uh, it was a large one of the world, but it's not, it's not going to match the 100 by 50 uh, hexes, as you can see here. Um, what I can do, though, is I can look and I can see what the resolution of that map was, and it happened to be 100, 1,800 pixels by 1,237 pixels. So what I can do is some math to figure out what would be a good ratio of hexes to use. And because my hex width is 46 and my hex height is 40, it's um, going to be a good idea to divide those numbers, the, the number of pixels, by 46 and 40 respectively to come up with the, the proper math for the number of hexes to use. However, because of the staggered nature of the hexes, and I'm doing column orientation here, for those uh, columns, I need to do only three quarters of this hex width per, uh, per column, because as you can see, once we get three quarters of the way over, we kind of start our next tile or the next column. So it's best to take that 46 and multiply it by three quarters um, to, to feed, and, then, and then use that number, 34 to 35, um, in order to use that to divide the 1801. And then we end up having 53 hexes across by, uh, and then I t if I take the 1237 and divide that by the 40, um, we end up with 31 hexes high. So I know that this is 100 hexes. So I'm going to expand, shrink uh, my rows and columns here, and I'm going to shrink the right side. So if I want to have 53 and I've got 100 now, I'm going to subtract 47 there. And if I have 50 high, and I want 31, I'm going to subtract uh, 19. And now I should get, once I do this, I should get a map that's roughly going to match what I want. Well, we'll make one other change. Hit OK there. Now let's change this to be the 53 by 31. And you can see that our map now roughly matches our hexes. We can tweak that if we wanted to, um, but for our purposes, I think that's uh, we can. Well, we'll do the 53. Well, no, they're not the not on the vertical, but on the horizontal. Yeah, no, I'm happy with that. You know, a little bit of margin of error isn't really a problem if you think about it. Back in the Middle Ages, it's not like they had satellite uh, satellite imagery and GPS to to know the exact locations of things. So if there's a little bit of a discrepancy, that's okay. Uh, but you can see that we're kind of close. Now, if I don't like that scale, if I wanted a different scale, of course, I could take that 53 by 31 and multiply that out. In fact, let's 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 make that change. Let's just do let's double the scale here. Let's go to 106 by 40 or by 62. All right. And then if I go back to tools and expand, shrink the columns rows. Now, if you don't have the pro version, you're going to need to create a new map to do this and create it with the proper um, number of hexes, number of columns and rows, and then um, re-add your underlay in order to get this right. Um, but go ahead and doubling our size. And now we should be able to see that yes, in fact, um, so that just gives us a little bit more, uh, more, a little bit more opportunity for some more detail. So diving in, as you guys saw in the prior video, if I wanted to use this to um, trace things, uh, essentially that's what we're doing is we're tracing things. And if I wanted to um, pick an area to use, um, well, I'm on the east coast of the U.S. I know the east coast of the U.S. a little bit better, so let's start there. So let's go with uh, primarily deciduous forest. Uh, I grew up in Pennsylvania, so we can do that. I live in Virginia now, so uh, I don't know if I do that more as farmland or if I do that more as um, forest as well. 
um, but you get the idea of what you can do. We can do some more forest as we get inland there. In fact, actually, it's probably probably better to do some forested mountains for these regions because we're in the Appalachian Mountains, kind of, sort of. Um, so if I have an Appalachian Mountain here, for example, and then maybe one more, and then I get down to some forested hills as we get around here, maybe. Again, the scale isn't great here. You know, you, you, you could make the scale, you know, four times this in order to um, get, you know, in fact, we can even do that. We can undo all of those. We can go to uh, Tools, Expand, Shrink, and this time we can add another 100 and six if we wanted a larger scale because we had 53 and we doubled that already and so if we want to double it again and then go by 62 here hit okay and then go back to the map that we're tracing so as you can see we've got some trial and error here uh, 212 to get a map that we like with the scale that we want 124 i believe and let's check the corner over here to make sure that that's what we want. Yes, roughly our map is in the right place. And so now I've got some more detail because if I, I didn't really like the idea of the East Coast having the Appalachian Mountains right up against the coast of Virginia, for example, where it's not really a good fit. So now I can go into terrain again and pull up my forested mountains and put them kind of more where they would belong perhaps and then do the forested hills a little bit further um, to the coast here forested hills and then have some farmland on the actual coast now if i wanted to um, add in the coastline that's where we're going to go to shapes here and we're going to create a shape for our coastline so what I need to do actually prior to that then is to go back to the opacity spinner here set the opacity this is the this controls in case you didn't see the video yesterday the opacity controls how see-through the map you're creating is if it's hundred percent you're not going to see uh, the stuff underneath unless it's got blank tiles there in which case you there's still some opacity for those blank tiles um, the top left and top uh, the top left X and top left Y controls set where that upper corner of the map is if you set this top left to two for example it would it would be approximately here if you set the top left Y to two it would be approximately here um, and as I said in the prior video, if you've got a map with the rows orientation, you're going to want the top left Y to be adjusted by twos. If it's in columns orientation, like here, you're going to want to adjust the columns adjusted by twos because that, um, just keeps the staggered that, 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 uh, otherwise the staggered nature of the map, uh, might mess you up. Although I guess that's actually mostly for, if you're tracing an existing hex map in this case, where we've got. Uh, a more organic looking map that that isn't as important so with that out of the way let me go back to the shapes drawer like I was saying we have some presets uh, none of those well we can do the preset for a river for example but we're gonna change that a little bit we're gonna set the fill to also be this color ocean kind of coastline color um, we're going to set it to, uh, what was the other set? Oh, the, um, tag. Yes. It's not a river. It's a coast. That was the other thing I was going to change. And then I go to, um, polygon in this case. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to create a polygon to trace over this. I'm going to zoom in some, so I get some more detail and, um, we don't want any I don't want any border to it so this is what you're doing um, you're just kind of tracing along here 
scroll up a little bit. Now it's a little bit hard for me to tell which of these things are um, labels underneath the map there and which is actually giving me information about where there's land or not. But then I just click out here into the ocean somewhere so that I'm covering up any partial hexes that are outside of there. And I'm sure that this coastline isn't going to match uh, because I don't have a p couple peninsulas that should be here and so forth. But you get the idea of what you could do. Um, you can go back to this opacity setting stuff. Um, and if you need to see those details better, you can set the opacity very low. And then you can see the underlying map. Maybe I wouldn't pick one with as many labels on it so it's easier to see all of this. Or maybe one with more resolution. Um, then on the other hand, if I want to see what I have created, you can see it there. If I go back to the terrain drawer, for example, and go to water C, then I can add in all of these hexes here. And you can see how that would work. Now let me zoom out. So that would be the process of creating a, a, a worldographer map um, by tracing um, a map image underlay. So again, thanks for the question about that. And um, I hope the tool lets you make some, some good maps. We keep on working on it. Um, we're supported uh, through you know people who buy the pro version, as well as people who are supporting us on Patreon. Each month we do a number of new icons and we take votes for new features to put into the program. So thank you very much.